happy Sunday. We're gonna get started in just a second. I gotta get my trusty uh, iPad ready for some stuff. Hope everyone's doing okay today. It is a gorgeous day in West Michigan. I don't know where everybody else is, but the sun is out and I have been very productive today. I got the laundry done, I got the grocery shopping done, I got a four mile run in, I got ready for this. So uh, I'm in a good place, I hope you guys are too. So we're gonna get started in just a minute and um, everything's ready to go. So you know what, why don't we just do it? Let's do it. If you're on and you're logged in, please feel free to say hi. Again, welcome to Bariatrics and Tips. I am Michelle Giesen. Thanks so much for joining me today. You know, I look forward to this day a lot. Sundays, usually midday, are pretty hard for me because it's the end of the weekend and we're getting ready for work and school for the kids and stuff, but I really do look forward to this and I hope you guys do too. And I'm um, thankful that we have this time together too. So one thing that we all have in common is that we've had weight loss surgery or we're gearing up to have weight loss surgery. But just because we're given this tool doesn't mean we have to feel deprived of eating well. Food is just such a huge part of our lives, whether we like it or not. And we have to learn to coexist with it, not be codependent, but coexist with it because we need it to live and it's just that simple. So the goal is to remove the word deprived from your vocabulary because there's no way you should walk the face of this earth ever having to feel deprived. There are ways around things, healthy ways, responsible ways. You know, life after bariatric surgery doesn't need to be spent wishing we could have this or wishing we can have that. We can have fun with food. This is what I refer to as my second chance at life. It's my chance to live large, to cook small, and to find flavor in everything that we do, I do. Um, and I've dedicated myself and our group to sharing the ways that I know in order to do just that. And it's worth the effort and the time because I'm worth the effort and the time and I know that you are too. So that is why we're here today. Today's theme is pizza pizzazz. And I'm gonna say, out of all the things that I was scared of when I first started on my weight loss bariatric journey, um, the thought of never having pizza again really, really shook me because it is my favorite, favorite thing. I'm a carb girl and I know everybody who knows me knows that I'm a carb girl. And I would rather have the pizza or the cheesy potatoes. You put a pizza, right here and a big huge hot fudge sundae right here and i will go for the pizza every single solitary time so tell me whether or not you're a um, sweets or a savory person i'd like to know that too but the thought of pizza not being in my life was really hard for me and there have been times and again i i'm not perfect i do stupid things and i make stupid mistakes but the difference now is that i have enough of these coping skills after weight loss surgery to be able to spot bad behaviors and nip them in the bud. But sometimes you can't just take one bite of pizza. Sometimes, I mean, I don't have any self-control. I know that about myself. I'm all or none. And I have to learn how to adjust with that. Um, and there were times where I would take a bite of pizza and then a second bite and then a third bite. And I know darn well that I'd be launching into a full dumping syndrome faster than you could say your own name. Um, and I, and I was stupid. But the good news is, is I'm able to isolate those bad behaviors and I'm able to nip them in the bud. And I'm able to use my kitchen skills and my knowledge about nutrition and health in order to find ways to still eat what I want, not feel deprived, and not be bowing to the porcelain god 20 minutes later. So that's what we're going to do today. But first, we're going to focus on the spotlight. Um, I have our spotlight today is Cindy Rhodes. So Cindy, hopefully you are watching. Cindy just had a procedure. Um, nothing to worry about. She's doing just great, but she was in the hospital overnight. And I think she came home yesterday. So everybody, please wish Cindy well. Um, Cindy had gastric sleeve surgery uh, on November 18th, 2019, and she's still having, oh, and then she also had 
hernia, hernia repair surgery um, this past October, and she's still having reflex issues, and um, but she's lost 225 pounds. I mean, that's that's 225 pounds. That's like both my two kids and a kid to spare. I mean, the, you did amazing, Cindy. I, I'm so in awe and so impressed. Um, so she says she's still trying to learn how to eat, aren't we all? Um, she says she finds that ground turkey and ground chicken are easy on her stomach than the actual breast meat. And that's interesting, I've never heard that before and hopefully she can tell us a little bit more. Maybe I'll post something and she can give us a little bit of background on that. Um, but things that she's learned, the heavier you are, the more weight you'll lose, totally true. And if you're a guy, you lose it as you blink anyways. Um, she also says, don't give up because you're in a stall. They are normal and they will happen and don't get discouraged. And she's so right too. You know, the stall is just a sign of weight loss success. It's just your body's way of adjusting. Um, and then she says, finally, trust your journey and never compare yourself to others. And truer words have never been spoken. Cindy, that's super astute. Um, and thank you so much. I'm gonna show you her pictures. You can see her before picture on the left. She's done a great job. And then right there, there's our girl, Cindy. Good job, Cindy. Very, very proud of you. Thanks for sharing your story today. I totally appreciate it. Um, that is our spotlight. I've got two things that we're gonna do, but I think what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go into the main pizza demonstration because I wanna actually cook it while we're doing something else. So um, we'll talk about the best protein cauliflower crust ever, at least in my opinion. Um, this is a recipe that I created. I am going to share it with you. Um, it is being, I've got, I think I've got three or four posts starting at three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock. Um, and so everything that you see here today, including removing the gills from your portobello mushroom, you will get all of that information on our group Facebook page a little bit later. So the, the crust I've already made, it's actually behind me. I'm still gonna review the um, ingredients with you, but we're gonna dress it with the toppings that I have right here. Hopefully you can all see that. Um, it's a really good recipe. It's really hearty. And if you saw my teaser alerts this week on Facebook, I call it soap opera pizza. And soap opera pizza is like perfect pizza. When I was a teenager and I was addicted to General Hospital, they were, uh, there was a pizza somewhere on that set all the time. And they were able to pick up the pizza and they were able to hold it in their hand and the crust stayed horizontal. It didn't droop over or anything. And so we always called it soap opera pizza. And this is soap opera pizza. It is so delicious that I'm, I'm just so stoked that there's something that we can have that really has just the faintest taste of cauliflower and holds up so nicely being baked. I have tried it as a regular pizza. I have used a miniature cast iron skillet to make a pan pizza. And in fact, the lunch post that I put today of that personal pan pizza was the cauliflower crust in a personal pan skillet, cast iron skillet, and it was like deep dish and it was delicious. And I only ate half because I got very full very fast. Um, so I tried it in that. Um, the pizza crust holds up well. It is, it freezes super well and it reheats in the microwave, the oven, or the air fryer super well too. So you've got a lot of versatility with this crust. Um, and so I'm gonna bring the crust over and I'm gonna show it to you and then I'm gonna go over the ingredients. We'll get it all dressed up and then we'll plop it in the oven and then we'll move over to the portobello, okay? So here is the pizza. I got my... I've got it on a baking stone and I think the baking stone is still hot because it just came out of the oven. So can you see that? Look at how golden brown that is. Now I did put it on a some parchment paper. So you can see my pizza stone in the parchment paper. Um, it is golden brown. It looks just the way it is on top. It looks on the bottom. And what I did was I hand, I hand pressed it. It's a very gooey, sticky 
uh, batter or dough when you get it out of the mixer. And what I did was I sprayed my hands with cooking spray and, and you know, did this to, like I was using soap. And then I just kind of used the palms of my hand to press everything out. And you, I had to re-spray um, myself a couple different times just to make sure. But um, I got a perfect size pizza. We'll eventually cut this into eight slices. Now the nutrition content for the eight slices, it's, this is, all I did was I pounded out the nutrition facts for the crust because the crust will stay the same, but you may opt to have a different pizza one day and a different pizza the next. So if you're logging your food, you can log the crust and then you can just log the toppings that you put on it separately. So each slice, one eighth of this pizza um, is 185 calories. It is 10 grams of fat, uh, six carbs, and 20 grams of protein. So it's super filling and very dense. And to be quite honest with you, I probably could have used 1 16th of a piece instead of 1 8th of a piece. Um, but you can be the judge. I have a hard time saying stop. I have to make myself stay stop. I have to eat until I'm 80% full. And then I have to tell myself, self, just stop. It's okay. And sometimes if there's enough left over, I'll save it for later or it can be a snack. But the thing that I know that I need to do is avoid the whole grazing thing. So even if it took me a, um, even if it took me that kind of time to do that, um, I'm not going to graze because that's, that's not, that's just not a good choice for me. Um, if you're questioning that, let your dietitian know that you have those questions and he or she can at least let you know if you're on the right track or not. But at any rate, the pizza crust, we are talking um, a 24 ounce bag of frozen rice cauliflower. I show up at, I shop at our local Meyer and they have a small bag and a large bag. This is actually the large bag. Um, and again, you can take these ingredients and you can cut them in half if you wanna make something smaller. Um, my intention today is to freeze these by the piece and that way I can take it out when I want and I can heat it up in the air fryer. So we've got our 24 ounce bag of uh, cauliflower rice or rice cauliflower. We've got two scoops of casein protein powder. Now a lot of other crusts require flour of some sort and that casein protein powder is not only gonna give us a good protein boost but it's gonna act as our flour. Um, I'm also, I also fortified mine with another two scoops of Gene Pro just because I wanted to get the biggest bang for my buck. Um, and Gene Pro by the tablespoon is super inexpensive where it comes to calories. I think one scoop is only 58 calories. So it was kind of a no brainer for me. Two eggs, um, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. It gives it that cheesy flavor. And again, another added protein boost. A half a teaspoon of kosher salt, um, two teaspoons of garlic, a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese, two cups of shredded mozzarella, say that five times fast, a teaspoon of butter extract. I've been using butter extract a lot because I think it helps with the casein protein. I think it kind of, I mean, the, the casein looks a little chalky because it looks like flour and it obviously doesn't have any taste. And that butter extract gives you kind of like a, a smoother buttery flavor without adding calories and fat to it. So I've been using that quite a lot a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and then a quarter cup of almond flour, kind of to help things stick together. And again, I can't stress this enough, the key to a really good cauliflower pizza crust is to make sure that you squeeze all the moisture out of it first. So you're gonna thaw it, or you can just throw it into a micro microwave-proof bowl and pop it in the microwave. Um, I think I put mine in today for maybe 10 minutes. You just want to get it steamed and cooked and everything. And then I laid it on a, a long piece of paper towel to get all the moisture out. And then before I threw it in the mixing bowl, I kind of squeezed it because the moisture is what's going to make for a soggy crust. And we don't want that. We want soap opera pizza. So um, as long as you make sure that you wring out and drain, devoid the, the cauliflower of that moisture as best you can, you're gonna be looking at a pretty nice righteous crust. <laughs> so you're gonna place everything in a, in a mixing bowl and I just got a new, um, a new toy this week. I got a KitchenAid mixer. So I threw everything in the KitchenAid and I let it um, 
I let it go and I actually have uh, pictures of the batter that I will post so you can see. Um, and I just kind of plopped it onto the parchment paper and I just started making sure that my greased hands with cooking spray got everything splayed out. And now here we are 17 minutes later, um, depending on your oven, you want to put it at 400 degrees for, um, I started the timer at 13 minutes and then I checked it like every three minutes and I think I got to 17 minutes before I decided that it was done. So you'll be the judge of it. Um, and then all you have to do is you, you will obviously want to pre-cook it, but now it's time to have some fun and that's going to be time to load our pizza toppings on. I've got uh, mushrooms, green pepper, green or purple onion, black olives, jalapenos, and turkey pepperoni. And then I've got our sauce. Um, and so I'm going to make, this is going to be a deluxe pizza. And no one in this family of mine is going to be eating this except me. So I got to make it exactly the way that I wanted it. So I'm going to start off with the sauce. Now, again, you'll want to compute your nutritional effects for the toppings that you put on there. But I'm going to start with my sauce. And I love, tomatoes are my favorite. And I love sauce so much. So I don't skimp. I actually use, it's funny, um, what kind of sauce do you use, Michelle? Well, I will tell you. <laughs> I use um, Meyer brand pizza sauce. And seriously, it is so good. It is so good and it's only 30 calories per serving. It's got zero grams of fat and some fiber, a little bit of protein, but um, it is just super tasty. And I use it all the time for um, dipping and even if um, today for lunch I had some marinara some of this pizza sauce on the side um, to dip my personal pan pizza in and it was pretty yummy so that's what I like of course what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for the other so use your favorite and make sure that you are using what you want to use because that way you don't feel deprived all right so I've got everything loaded onto my pizza and now I don't know we're gonna have a debate here who puts the cheese on first and then the toppings on second or who puts the toppings on first and then the cheese on second I don't know I've done it both ways but I want it to look super pretty so I'm gonna put the cheese on first and remember there's a lot of cheese in the pizza crust right now so you don't really have to put a whole lot I mean I mean, cheese, you had me at cheese. I love cheese. There's no such thing as too much cheese. And even if I put this whole bag, there still wouldn't be a, as much, there still would be no such thing as too much cheese. But I've got a lot of toppings I'm putting on this. And I think what I'll do, what I did last time, is once I get all the toppings on, I'll just do another dusting of cheese as well. So I don't have much on there now, but now my turkey pepperoni, just gonna throw some on there. I didn't put the turkey pepperoni on last time because I didn't have any. I just bought it the other day. So I've got that. Jalapenos. Who likes jalapenos on their pizza? Weigh in. Let's see. Uh, I, I can't have pizza without jalapenos anymore. It's freaking amazing. And if you haven't tried it, I strongly encourage you to try it. I'm a pizza freak. We love pizza so much here. All right, now black olives. It's looking good and really it's too legit to quit. This pizza looks bona fide. All right. Purple onion. I love onion. One of these things that I did not like as a kid or as a teenager, but in my adulthood, I love me some onion. Probably had a lot of us that way too. Green pepper. I sliced all these vegetables myself just a little bit earlier. I got another new gadget. Oh, me and my kitchen gadgets, let me tell you. But it's looking good, don't you think? And then mushrooms, love mushrooms. All right, so I'm gonna put all of them on. Ha ha, because it's my pizza, all mine. All right, and then just for kicks and giggles, I am going to just put a little bit more cheese. And now I'm gonna pop this into the oven 
and while it's cooking, we'll do something else. Can I get it in the oven without it doing something? All right. I'm gonna set the timer for six minutes. That should give us the time that we need. Um, so the other pizza I wanted to tell you, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of variations. In, in thinking about the things that we have discussed on our group page, yes, red onion is the best, Colette. <laughs> red onion is so good. But okay, red onion or purple onion? I call it purple onion. <laughs> but call it what you will, it is pretty good stuff. Um, you can use, I have done um, with the Mr. Tortillas, I have done like a pizza roll up where I just put the sauce and some cheese and I roll it up kind of like a taquito and I've eaten it that way. Um, I've done the outer aisle cauliflower thins. I've done pizza the same exact way. There are so many different variations you can do it just to, no, Colette, I think they actually say it's called red onion. I think you're correct, but I've always called it purple onion because it looks more purple to me than red, but potato, potato. Um, one other thing that I like to do is the portobello pizza, and you'll have that recipe today, I think four or five o'clock, um, is using a portobello mushroom cap as your crust. And it is pretty darn, it is pretty darn yummy. Um, the thing that you wanna make sure you do, and there's been instructions on our group page, and there'll be a repeat of instructions today, um, is to make sure you clean out the inside of it. These are called the gills of the mushroom. So you wanna make sure that you get the stem out of there. And then you wanna just take a spoon and you wanna scrape the gills out. So I'm, I'm scraping it with the spoon. If you leave the gills in, you're not gonna die, but you're gonna have one dark, mushy, ugly, pizza and plus you, you want you need to hollow that out a little bit so it can host all of your yummies in there okay so the gills have been scraped I'm going to show you what that looks like so now you can see it and here's the gills pretty nasty if you ask me but I love my mushrooms so you do what you got to do So all you would do in this case is now you've got your crust. Um, I don't have to put mushrooms on this, which is cool. And so all I would do is I would take my sauce, as much sauce as you want, and get it in there. You can see it all right. I use a grapefruit spoon to make it easier. Oh, Misty, that's a good idea. Misty uses a grapefruit spoon whatever works. I have used um, plastic spoons in the past too and they work just fine. So again, use what you like for sure. Um, and now we can actually use the rest of our toppings and we can dress our mushroom. I mean, if you really love, have room, you can put more mushrooms on the mushroom. Um, some turkey pepperoni. It's great because when the, um, when the cheese melts and everything, it's like a deep dish mushroom dream, and it makes me very happy. <laughs> so, all right, so what I would do is in here, let me go ahead. This is my cast iron mini skillet. I've got two of them. It's a Pampered Chef item. I know, I'm a Pampered Chef addict. We all know this. Uh, and I'll just put my mushroom, put it on my mushroom. Let's get some cheese on there. I'm at the end of this bag. Glad that I bought more. Um, so you can do a couple different things. You can put this in the oven, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, and I'm gonna cook it and then I'm gonna save it for a rainy day. But um, you can put it in the oven until, you wanna make sure that like when you spear your fork into the mushroom, that it kind of is soft. I mean, you don't want to have a raw mushroom. You want something that you can slice. This is gonna be a pizza that you eat with a fork and a knife. It's not gonna be soap opera pizza, that's for sure. Um, but you can do that. You can, I put it in the air fryer before. 
Um, like I start at like 350 or 375 and I just check it. I start it for at least seven minutes and that seems to work out pretty well. Put it in the oven. If you have a toaster oven, you can broil it. It's very, very versatile. Um, so I'll go ahead and it looks like we've got two minutes left on our pizza. I'll put this back away. I think we might be ready to take that bad boy out. Just in the nick of time, let me get my oven mitts. And I can show you this wonderful pizza. All right, let me know what you think. Tell me that doesn't look freaking amazing. It's amazing. This is pizza. Pizza with no deprivation. I am very excited about it. This turned out great. I will take a picture of it and put it on Facebook so you guys can see uh, close up for it. It really turned out good. It looks, the vegetables are nice and they still have like a crisp to it. And thanks Liz, yes, it looks amazing. Very happy with it. So. I, it's probably a little too hot to cut, but here we go. You're going to need a full-fledged pizza cutter for this. The last pizza I made, I actually let it sit for a little bit, and I probably should follow suit, but I'm so excited because it's so good. Eight beautiful pieces, all for me which is the gift that keeps on giving. And there you are. There's your pizza. Isn't that amazing? Cauliflower crust. Who would have thought? I'm very excited. So that is our recipe demonstration today. Hopefully you guys have learned a little something about the art of a cauliflower pizza crust. It really is fun to make things up and to to try new things and really, honestly, there's just the, the faintest, faintest um, hint of cauliflower. It's just such a great, it's such a great win for us, I think. So I appreciate you sticking in with me. The mushroom's gonna take a little bit to cook um, and so I can put a picture of that on Facebook too. Um, the recipes again will be posted uh, if you have any questions about any of the food items, the techniques, the gadgets, um, let me know. I'm an open book when it comes to the kitchen and I love to share, as you can clearly see. Um, what else do we have up next? Next week on March 28th, we have air fryer appetizers and I'm just finalizing the menu, but I'm going to show you a... Um, how does it work for leftovers? Colette, I had addressed it earlier and I'll tell you again, the pizza leftovers are amazing. They crisp up real nice in the oven, in the air fryer, because you said you just got an air fryer, I remember that. So um, all you have to do is plop it in the air fryer for four or five minutes and you got yourself a nice piece of pizza. That's what I did with that um, mini pan pizza that I had for lunch today. I plopped it in the air fryer. And even for like regular pizza, my husband uses the air fryer when he reheats pizza too. And it was the huge, a topic of a huge conversation that he and his coworkers had at work. So it was pretty funny. But um, at any rate, next week, air fryer appetizers. The menu, um, I've got a really good protein batter that I made and we are going to do um, mozzarella sticks and cauliflower wings, and you are gonna be astounded. I might have one more trick up my sleeve, but if I tell you, I have to kill you, and I want you to stick around for next week, so I will refrain. Um, April 4th, I have decadent dessert debauchery scheduled. Now, April 4th is Easter. Is everyone still able to meet, to make that at two o'clock? I, I don't know, I don't think that we are going to my in-laws house where we normally go that hasn't been solidified. So I was kind of contemplating whether or not I wanted to do the cooking or the recipe demonstration on the 4th or if I wanted to switch it to Saturday the 3rd. Let me know what you think in this message thread um, and I can do a poll as well and see where we all stand because 
it doesn't make sense to do it if there's not going to be a lot of people. And let me tell you, the dessert debauchery, I've got some amazing things planned. And I'm not even, um, I'm, I, I can't tell you at this point because i got to try my hardest to keep the secret. <laughs> so at any rate, um, there are some really great things scheduled this week on our group page. Um, hope that you're finding these posts helpful. I hope that it's triggering dialogue between us. Um, and speaking of which, I wanted to apologize for um, that person that was on Facebook yesterday that kind of caused a ruckus. Um, I'm sorry if anyone was offended. I think what we really need to focus on is not having anyone negative in our group. This is our page. This is our community. We want to make sure that we all have this safe haven to go to. We're, we're bouncing ideas off each other and we're on our journeys and this is our common ground and so i think um, there's just no room for that that person has been banned um, i wanted to thank everybody that reported the activity to me before i even saw it um, i also want to backtrack a little bit and let cindy know that because we featured her in the spotlight i'm going to be sending her a bariatrics and tips logo magnet that'll go out in the mail tomorrow if you want to be pictured um, or featured on our Sunday Spotlight, please just message me with a short biography, just like how Cindy did, and a couple pictures so we can see who you are and how far you've come. And um, I'll feature you, and once you're featured, I will pop a magnet in the mail to you. And the magnets are our logo magnets. I actually make all the magnets. Um, and there's the magnet. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed our time together today. Happy Sunday. It is a gorgeous day out, so please make the most of it. And remember, no matter where you are in the journey, you have no time but the present to live large, to cook small, and to find flavor in everything that you do, okay? Have a good Sunday. See you later. Bye.